Hello, e people. I probably need to start this video by saying that I really do like Elasticsearch. I work with it day in, day out, and I can testify that it's a wonderful product that can make your work easier, access to your data faster, and entirely new concepts possible. But Elasticsearch is not a silver bullet. Great as it is, it can also be horribly misused, making your application difficult to scale, your code harder to write, and your overall experience pretty miserable. This sort of misuse isn't the business willfully abusing the product. Elasticsearch is a tool with strengths and weaknesses. So playing to its strengths and mitigating its weaknesses are absolutely vital to getting the most out of it. An anti-pattern I've seen several times is thinking of Elasticsearch in the same way you'd think about a row-based relational database like Postgres, SQL Server, or MySQL, but with better support for full-text search, very fast aggregations, and fault tolerance. And this might seem fine early on, but it causes insidious problems that can be incredibly difficult or even impossible to rectify. One problem this can make very apparent is the performance of update operations. Updating documents in Elasticsearch using the Update API can be an expensive operation, as it's actually a read, merge, index, and delete. A delete isn't an immediate delete either. The document is marked as deleted, but no space is freed up until Lucene, the shard holding the document, performs a merge. Another problem with updates is the visibility of this changing data. The result of an insert, update, or delete operation in a relational database is immediately visible once the transaction is committed. In Elasticsearch, however, queries can return old data even after the operation is flushed to disk. A refresh needs to occur for your changes to be visible to query results, which is another expensive operation. You can tell Elasticsearch to do a refresh as part of your update, but that will slow down the update and put extra load on the cluster. There's simply no good way to make transactional operations like this performance and efficient in Elasticsearch. Row-based relational databases are built specifically for this type of transactional operation. Elasticsearch is really designed to work best with immutable data in append-only indices. It's not ACID compliant either, so it doesn't offer the same guarantees other technologies do. This doesn't mean that you should never update documents. You just need to be mindful of when you need to be able to see the result of an update, how often you're going to be doing them, your index mappings, and the impact on cluster performance. Another common issue is trying to model your data in the same way you would in a relational database. Now, this thinking often comes from tutorials saying that an Elasticsearch index is like a database table so viewers instinctively create an index that maps to an existing database table. They'll add in more fields from other tables once they realize they need to denormalize data, but this can snowball and result in thousands upon thousands of fields in their index mapping. Or they'll use join fields or nested documents to still model their data around the entities in their data model. The result is often an enormous mapping and difficult to write queries that perform horribly. The main difference between Elasticsearch and a relational database in terms of how you model your data is what you're modeling. In a relational database, you model entities, relationships, and constraints, resulting in a normalized schema that you're able to query in many different ways. In Elasticsearch, however, you want to create your index mapping around the queries that you want to run. The queries that you want to run would define the fields you need in the index and what field types they should be. Keeping the mapping size down while modeling data this way often means that you end up with similar or duplicated fields in multiple indices, and this is absolutely fine. Trading storage for ingest and query performance is a worthwhile compromise, arguably even a necessary one to get the most out of Elasticsearch. Now, as Elasticsearch isn't like a relational database, it requires pretty much a whole new skill set, and you may not have any existing transferable knowledge. You will probably be able to muddle through with a single node cluster holding a modest amount of data purely because there's less scope for things to go wrong. Scaling up to three, five, or more nodes holding terabytes of data 
can bring an array of problems that you never imagined. There are decisions to be made about how and where to run your cluster. Do you have resources available in your own data center, or would you rather run it in the cloud? Are you going to provision and administer the nodes with Ansible, Docker, Kubernetes, or something else? Are you able to diagnose and fix problems with ingest and query performance? Can you define appropriate mappings? You'll need some form of monitoring as well, and there are plenty of options for that too. Some cluster stability problems can require knowledge about Java garbage collection, operating systems, storage, networking, security, and more. This may make you think that a managed service is the obvious choice. Just pay somebody else to worry about all these details. Managed services aren't immune to outages or performance problems though. Plus, a lot of the common issues with Elasticsearch are caused by shard sizes, shard counts, bad mappings, poor queries, your data basically, and managed services can't do much about those. It is incredibly important to stay close to the latest version of Elasticsearch. As with any product, staying on the latest version will make your life much easier in the long term. Elasticsearch updates are fairly frequent and contain new features as well as performance and resource utilization optimizations. Elastic are quite sympathetic when it comes to making breaking changes and only make major ones if they absolutely have to be done. There have, however, been some major breaking changes in the past. Breaking changes sometimes require the same simple change to be required all throughout your code base. Others, like removing support for multiple document types in an index, require an enormous amount of work on the cluster and your code. You can end up swimming in technical debt if you put fix breaking changes on the to-do list instead of actually working on it. The final issue I want to mention, at least for now, is choosing Elasticsearch for the wrong reasons. What problem are you really trying to solve? If you're not using any features specific to Elasticsearch, there may be a different technology that's less foreign to your team, yet could provide what you need. If you're looking to make an existing data-driven application faster, have you really exhausted all possible methods of making your existing stack quicker? Get a deeper understanding of your current software by investing in some training, or even hiring a consultant to help you. Now, these options might seem expensive at first blush, but I can almost guarantee that they are cheaper in the long term. You might be struggling to get data out of a relational database as quickly as you'd like, but bringing in a whole new technology you have absolutely no experience with just because you've heard it's faster or more scalable, you could be jumping out of the frying pan and into the fire. Now I've got this far without even mentioning the license costs. You can get a long, long way with the standard free license, but be prepared if you need features that aren't free. You'll be paying per node per year, and that adds up very quickly. In summary, Elasticsearch is incredibly effective when used appropriately and can enable teams to do things they never even imagined were possible. But it's not for everyone. It can be complex even in a single node environment. And distributing the data over multiple nodes can bring extra problems with solutions that aren't obvious or immediately intuitive. Before investing the time and money in a shiny new Elasticsearch cluster, do what you can with what you have, where you are. I'd love to hear from you. Have you encountered any of these problems before? Have you managed to remedy problems like these? How did conversations about those remedies go with management? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, have fun and cheerio.